Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. Man, it's good to worship with you today. Amen. What a great time of praise and worship, and uh, we're excited to have you all here. It is time now for our kindergarten, first and second grade. You can be dismissed. Jaden is in the back there waiting on you, and so I know he's excited to get to be with you, and we hope you all have a great time, and we'll see you uh, back here in just a little while, all right? Kindergarten, first and second grade, uh, you may go. All right. And there they go. Oh, man. As I said last week, I wish they'd be as excited coming down front with me as they are to get out of here. Amen? Folks, we're going to continue on thinking about thankful hearts. As we head on into this ho- deeper into the holiday season, we ought to always have thankful hearts. And so uh, this morning, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalm chapter 100. We're going to look at the entire chapter today. And uh, before you panic, wait till you get there and you'll find that it's not that long of a chapter, all right? So it's not going to be one of those 115 verses that we're going to have 27 points on, amen? So go ahead and turn to Psalm 100 because we're going to be talking about thankful hearts. Now something I want to, to have you think about is this right here. My friends, Christians aren't always perceived as the happiest people on the planet. You can go ahead and say amen, because that's true. Amen? We don't have that perception. We don't don't have that thought of people when they think of Christianity. A lot of times, unfortunately, they don't think about us being the happiest people on the planet. But yet, my friends, listen to me, we should be. Because I want to share with you, we are a blessed people. Amen? Amen? But a lot of times, whenever people think about the church or they think about Christians, they they think about people who are moaning, groaning, complaining all the time, backbiting and fighting and fussing and carrying on and talking about each other and always walking around with a sourpuss look on our face because we're trying to be honoring to God. My friends, listen to me. God has told us that we ought to have thankful hearts and from a thankful heart ought to have a peaceful, happy spirit. Doesn't mean that we're happy with that everything goes on. We're happy with everything that happens. Doesn't mean we walk around all day with sunshine and rainbows. We don't get to do that. Because we have this thing called life that we've got to live. Amen? And as I've been sharing with you, life sometimes doesn't go well. So I know we have our problems. I know we have, have situations that we don't prefer. But my friends, we really ought to be happy people. We ought to have a peace in us. We ought to have a a thankful heart because we realize that God has been good to us and God has blessed us in our lives, amen? And if we could go around with a thankful heart, it would literally change everything about us. And I ask the question, why is that? Why is it that we as Christians don't have that a lot of times? Why is it that the church now has not holding up that that banner of thankfulness that we get caught up in a lot of the things of the world and sometimes even worse in the world and and I've come up with this that we've lost a couple of things the first thing that I think we've lost as a church as a Christian is that we've lost the awe of God we don't think about the awesomeness of God anymore that we have so much around us that we've kind of lost that awe that wow factor as we like to call it this week on our wednesday night bible studies i've been sharing with the men uh, called a a book called the man god uses and we've been talking about a different different things that god can do in men and guys listen to me if if you're looking for a good bible study we're doing a great job not because i'm in it not because i'm heading this thing up but just it's a great time for men to come together and study the god the word of god And what I talked to them about this past Wednesday is how we have lost that awe of God. How we don't think about the the privilege that we have to even breathe, the privilege that we have to be here today, just to think that this God who created the world, who created the universe, who holds everything in its place, who is the giver and sustainer of life, the blessings of all things where the Bible says all good things come from Him, that we don't realize that, that we get to come in here today. And folks, that ought to cause us to go, wow. Wow. That we get to be in here today. Many of us didn't wake up this morning and go, wow, just think, I get to be in church today. I get to sing praises to the Almighty God who has blessed me beyond anything I could ever imagine. 
And I get to fellowship with brothers and sisters. And man, we get to do it freely and openly. We don't have to hide. We don't have to, to worry about people busting in through the doors and taking us out of here. Wow! Amen? You see what I'm talking about? We should woke up this morning going, praise God. Guess what we get to do? We get to be in his presence this morning. Wow. He lives inside of me. Wow. He has given me all power and all wisdom that comes from him. He has blessed me with his very presence in all things in my life. Wow. And folks, I believe we can as Christians get the idea that probably we're not the most happy people because we've lost this wow identity with God. It doesn't mean much to us when it should mean the world. Wow. And through that, then we've lost this thankfulness. And without thankfulness, there is no peace, there is no happiness, there is no joy, there is no uplifting, there is no encouraging, because we don't feel like we're, we don't have this thankful spirit living in us. But my friends, if we would pause and realize just how good God has been for us and to us, if we could somehow reach out there and, 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 and take that spirit and, and, say, and, and consume it inside of ourselves, mm, what a difference the church could make. What a difference we as Christians could make. People would actually want us to come into their presence. They might even actually want us to come into their restaurants after church. Amen? Because there's going to be some good people. Oh, get ready, because in about, well, I got 21 minutes left. But in about 35 minutes, there's going to be a group of people coming in here. And I believe they're from this church right down the road there. And man, we, boy, we look forward to them coming in on Sunday morning. Because I know they're going to be happy. They're not going to complain about anything that's going on. They're not going to write us about how slow we are and how this and that. And they're going to tip us really well. Woo! We can't wait for them to come. Folks, listen, I've talked to those folks before. And you know the day they dread the most? Right after church, they go, oh, no. Here they come. Wow. Thankful people, thankful hearts. We ought, to be, we ought to be the happiest people. We ought to come in and spread that love and that joy. But I think because we've lost those two things, it's very difficult to be put into that category again. Oh, but if we could just realize it. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 100. We're going to be looking at something here, and I hope and I pray that, that this message, not because I'm preaching it, but I hope because of, of the content of what God has laid on my heart and what he's going to reveal to us through his scripture right here, man, I hope that it will encourage your heart today. I hope that you'll leave out of here ready to take on the world, ready to share what Christ has done in your life, and that it can transform you. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. Psalm 100. Starting at verse 1, we're going to read the whole chapter. Whole chapter. Not leaving any of it out. Psalm 100, verse 1 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all your land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Well, that sounds like a happy group. Amen? Know that the Lord, He is, he is God. It is He who made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. It, so, as a result, here we go. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Father, thank you for this privilege we have today. Thank you for what you're doing here, how you're transforming lives. God, how you're working through us. And I pray today, Father, that that we would leave out of here being transformed by your power and by your word and that God we could be that great example that you desire for your people to be and Father I pray as always that today my word these are not my words but yours and Father I pray that this is not my message but yours as well 
And Father, I pray the response of everyone in here would be as you desire it for it to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Make a joyful noise. And, and this text, man, I, I remember even whenever I was reading back over it and I was studying, preparing all this, and I got down to verse 4, and it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into enter his courts with praise. There was a song that stuck into my head, amen? And I know it happens. I know some of you are probably already th- singing it in your head. Because, and I know it works because even this week when I gave Elizabeth, our secretary, when I gave her the, uh, the, the text so that she could put it in the bulletin so everybody would know, be aware of what I'm going to be preaching on before I preach it, that uh, I could even hear her. In my office, I began to hear her humming that song. So I thought, well, hey, why don't we today, since everybody probably knows that song, we haven't sang it in forever here at First Baptist West, we're going to sing a song. Now understand, I am not the music guy. And please know there's a reason I'm not. All right, so before I do this, and y'all got to sing with me, but we're going to sing that song. You know, we enter into the gates with thanksgiving in our heart. We enter into first. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all, y'all know that song? Okay, if you don't, you're going to learn it today, and I'm going to teach it to you. But we're all going to sing it, all right? Because I promise you, it's going to... Now, I know some of you are already thinking, I'm not going to sing that song. See? You're already proving my point before I even made it. We ought to be happy. We ought to sing, woo, sing the song, amen? And see what it does to you, all right? Now, it, it, you know it's enter his gates with thanksgiving in heart. All right, ready? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad, glad, glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Now how can you not sing that and not smile, amen? That's how God wants us to enter into this place. That's how God wants us to enter into our daily lives. Because every single moment of our day, as his children, we are in his gates. We are in his courts. This is our life. And so we need to have that all again. We need to have that thankful spirit again. And the question is, why thankful? Very quickly, why thankful? First of all, he tells us, starting in verse uh, verse 4, verse 5, we enter into this, we have a thankful heart. Why? Because the Lord is good. Let me hear an amen on that one. The Lord is good. Now, the thing is, we need to understand that at at all points, God is good. At all times, God is good. And we know all the time. All the time, God is good. And God is good all the time, right? Through everything, no matter what we are. Being, Being so good, my friends, we ought to be privileged to get to be with him to be so good we ought to be privileged to be his to be so for him to be so good we ought to count it a blessing to even be counted with him because my friends in everything through everything god is good i also share with the men on the wednesday night that the, the the sovereignty of god is a very difficult thing even though we like to say it in the church god is good and everything god does is right he's sovereign he gets to choose anything he wants to do My friend, that's easy to say, but it's hard to praise. Because sometimes, as I shared with the men, sometimes we we have things happen in our lives that we still, even through everything, if God is in control and God is always good, sovereignty means that everything he does is right. Everything that he allows to happen is right. And sometimes that's very difficult to do when we maybe get a phone call that will transform our lives. When we get something said to us, man, this idea of God being good, even in those situations, it's when we know the awesomeness of God and know the promises of God. My friend, listen to me. We can understand that God is good. But not only is God good, but the second thing that we get to do is that we know that his mercy is everlasting. We see that God is so good that his mercy for me, his mercy for you is everlasting. The Bible says in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, says, uh, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. 
great is your faithfulness you know what that is saying is that every morning I wake up and I get to wake up and it's it's a privilege amen it's a privilege that hey I don't know about you but God has every right to consume me amen but it's by his mercies that he hadn't consumed me it's not because I don't it's not because I'm so good I, I don't need to be consumed oh boy but it's by his mercies every day that I'm not consumed. It's by his mercies every day that I wake up. It's by his mercies that I get to move on in my life. And his compassions, they don't fail. So, and, and God wakes up, or when we wake up, God is there because God never sleeps. But when we wake up, it's not like God says, oh, there's Harold again. He's awake. Oh boy, here we go. No, it's every morning when I wake up and God is waiting on me. And I wake up and, and God says, there you are. I've been waiting for you. Man, I see you freshly every day. And it's not like, boy, he, I wore out a lot of my mercies yesterday. How many of you have ever felt like you're getting close to running out your mercies? Man, I, I've, had, I've had some good days that I've not needed a whole lot of mercies. But man, I've had days that I've needed a lot. And I praise God that I don't have a limit to, my, to his mercies coming to me. And that he views me every single day in a new way. He views me as fresh every single day. Ready for me. Ready for me to wake up. Ready for me to get my day. Ready for him to be able to work through my life in every situation I'm in. God's mercies never go short. They never run out. They're, they're, they're even renewed daily as I said. And he sees us through fresh eyes. But not only that, his truth endures forever. He never changes. His truth never changes. His expectations, his standards, they never change. Folks, this ought to be good, amen? This ought to make us happy that we don't have to worry about what kind of mood God's in today. Amen? What kind of mood is God in? What's his truth today? Is he going to change on me? No, we don't have to worry about it because his truth endures forever. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Folks, mood is a bad thing, amen? And moods change quickly, especially in my house. Amen. Wife and three daughters. Gentlemen, you could have backed me up on that one right there. Thank y'all. Y'all left me hanging. You looked at your wife and says, I don't know what he's talking about. Looked at your daughters and go, oh, honey, you're, you, you're never bad mood. You're always good. Back me up, gentlemen. But God doesn't change by mood. God doesn't, listen, God doesn't change by time and fads. And all these things of manly ideas or man-made thoughts, God doesn't change by those. And so we know that what he stated and what he established before, he establishes again. And folks, that means a lot to us. That should mean a lot to all of us here. It never changes by, by mood or by times or even on a whim. God doesn't wake up one day and go, you know what? Something just came to me. And, and Harold's, Harold's been going along pretty smooth. I, I need to throw that dude a curveball. Just on a whim. I, don't, I just feel kind of in that mood today. You know, I'm, I'm going to do this to him. No. Man, God is secure. God is sure. And we can hold fast to his promises. Amen? So in those times of difficulty, I don't have to say, has God changed his mind today? Has he left me? Have I run out of my mercies this morning? Is that why this is going on in my life? I don't have to worry about that. Because God is steadfast. God is secure. God will always be there. He doesn't act on whims or moods or just fads of time. It goes on. It goes on. So we ought to be thankful at all times. 
at all times. I don't, and I, listen, when I'm talking about thankful, I don't mean that we ought to be just happy again with rainbows and unicorns and all this stuff and happy-go-lucky all the time. No, sometimes we enter into very difficult times of our lives. But we can know that there's still peace and there's strength. There's encouragement there. And I don't have to walk around beaten down all the time because I have a God that loves me at all times. That means in my past, in my present, and in my future. I know that God is going to be there. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and you can turn over there with me if you don't mind. Chapter 20 of 2 Chronicles, we're going to be looking at verse 17. Now what's going on here, and I want, I want to very quickly, i just got a little bit of time here. I want to show you that God is, that we can be thankful at all times, no matter what. What is going on here is Jehoshaphat is, is the king, and they are being surrounded now. They are being surrounded by a vast army that has come out to, to destroy Jerusalem. And so what we have here is we have now Jehoshaphat and his army and his whole, whole area is outnumbered significantly. And it the, the, the doesn't look good for them. So we look at verse 17. It says, you will not need, this is, this is God speaking to Jehoshaphat. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord and worshipped him. Now what I want you to understand is they were worshipping God, and God, listen to me, God hadn't even done anything yet. The army was still out there. But God said, hey, I want you to, to go out and you understand that, that, that out there in front of you is a vast army, but I'm going to take care of you. So what I want us to understand, my friends, at all times we have hope that's before us. Whatever is going on tomorrow, we have hope for tomorrow. Whatever is out there in front of us, before we even get there, God is already there. God is already working in us. God is already working for us. And he told them that tomorrow, go out there and be ready. And immediately, because of his promise, the nation of Israel began to worship and praise him. They were giving him thanks for something he hadn't even done yet. What they were doing was they was giving him thanks for the promise. The promise of tomorrow. My friends, listen to me. We have hope tomorrow. And that's why I've encouraged you even last week. I don't care what is going on in your life right now. Know that tomorrow there's hope. God is out there. He is ready to work. He is already preparing for us what is going to be taking place. So we can give hope for the future. Why? Because God is in control of that. God is working that. God has promised us that to be ready for tomorrow. I've got tomorrow taken care of. So, folks, listen to me. We need to be giving God thanks right now for the hope we have tomorrow. That will give us thanks, because sometimes we dread tomorrow. Don't we? Sometimes we dread tomorrow. Sometimes we dread next week. Oh, this is going to be taking place next week. Oh, God, I'm not ready for this. God, please help me. Oh, God, this is so bad. God says, man, I'm, I've already given you hope for that. I've given you hope. So give me thanks already for what's going to be coming because I got it. He told the nation of Israel, said, stand still and behold the salvation of your Lord. He's already warning us and telling us, hey, folks, I got tomorrow. So there's hope. But not only that, but for the power in the midst of it. Look at verse 20. So they, Israel, rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of the holiness. And they went out before the army, and they were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, there it is again. So what was going on now? Remember, the day before, they had praised him 
for tomorrow. Now tomorrow is here. Now it's time. Now it's time to go out. And it's not sometimes not so bad when you're in your house and knowing that the enemy is out there. But man, when you now have to go out and actually get in the middle of it. They were walking up and there before them was this huge, vast army. And Jehoshaphat led them and they were giving thanks to God for right now because, listen to me, they knew the power that was in their midst and that power was the Almighty God. My friends, listen to me. I don't care what it is you're going through right now. You do not have to give up. You do not have to be defeated because that God who created all the universe is still there with you right now. Wherever, if you're right there in the middle and you're surrounded by enemy, guess what? God is still right there with you. And God says, I want you to give thanks to me because right now I have given you power. I have given you overcoming power. I have given you conquering power. As a matter of fact, I have given you more than conquering power so my friends we can give god thanks for right now because there is power where we're standing amen there is power because god lives inside of me through his son jesus christ and the holy spirit you have that so he says don't give thanks just for tomorrow give thanks for right now right now but then we go to the next one Thank God for the victory given. Let's drop down to verse 27. Now, what has happened here? They go out there, and we see that God begins to work, and that army begins to literally die and, and fight each other and slay each other, and they're all dying. The nation of Israel, they're just sitting here praising God for the power that he's given them right now. So it's all said and done. The battle is over. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat, in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord has made them rejoice over their enemies. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord was on all the kingdom of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the, re the realm of Joshua was quiet, for God, his God gave him rest all around. My friends, listen to me. They did something that I believe a lot of times we forget to do. Because, again, of not forgetting the awesomeness of God and not having that thankful heart. So often in our lives, we got something out there in our future. And, man, we know it's coming, and it, it's kind of tough. And so we begin to pray, oh, God, I praise you because I trust in you. I trust that you're going to take care of that situation. And I know. And then we get in the middle of it, and there we are, man, we're surrounded. Oh, God, I, I prayed for this, and, and I prayed for power. And then all of a sudden, we get victorious, and we go, "Woo! I did good. Next, what's next? Do you know what we need to do? Man, if we prayed for something in the future and we praise God for the future, we praise God for the present, you know what we need to do? We need to stop sometimes and say, God, thank you for what you just did. Thank you for the victory that you gave me. Because you've been good. And God, I couldn't have gotten through that on my own. Thank you, God. Sometimes we pray and we pray for something and God blesses us with it and we forget then to thank Him. Remember that God is good. Remember that His mercies are everlasting. Remember that His truth endures forever. And that we can thank God for those things that are in our future already because of His promises. We can thank him for where I'm in the midst of my struggle. But thank you, God, that you have not left me. You've not forsaken me. And God, you've given me the power to be able to overcome this. And God, thank you for what you've just gotten me through. Thank you, God, for that victory. Thank you for that accomplishment that you were able to do in my life. God, thank you. And I want to give you praise. And my friends, listen to me. If, listen to me. If we're praising God for the future, and we're praising God for the present, and we're praising God for the past, we can't help but be thankful, and we can't help but make a difference in people's lives. And so we can wipe away that old idea that all you Christians are nothing more but a bunch of whiners and complainers, and all you do is backbite and you fight each other and you talk negative about each other. My friends, that's, a, that's not a thankful heart at work. But you don't care about the people that are lost. You'd rather be, in your, be doing your thing and, than not worrying about the people. My friend, listen to me. A thankful heart will make a difference thankful heart's going to make a difference and today I want to ask you 
And I close with this. Do you have a thankful heart? Have you been displaying in your life by your words, by your actions, and by your emotions? Have you been displaying a thankful heart? Because listen to me, God is good. All the time. And all the time. Create in me, God, a thankful heart. Let me know of your mercies and how they, they endure. Let me know of the promises and how steadfast they are. Create in me a thankful heart and a right spirit. Restore back to me the joy of your salvation. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And God, we thank you for your blessing. Thank you so much for your watch care. And God, as we enter into the next few moments of invitation, I pray for every person in this room that God, that if, if they are not able to have a thankful spirit because, the Lord, they just don't even know you in their life, I pray, Father, that you would speak to them. You would draw them into that saving grace so that, Lord, they could understand whose they are. And, Lord, they can become your children. That, Lord, no matter what they've done, no matter where they've been, no matter what they've said, that, God, you will welcome them in. And then, Father, I pray. I pray for your kids. I pray for your children here in this church that, God, if, if it's been difficult for them, to have this thankful heart. Maybe they've struggled. Maybe, maybe, Lord, things have been tough and they've taken their eyes off of you and put it on their stuff, put it on their situation. That, God, you would draw, call their attention back to you and focus on you, Lord, and create in them a thankful heart that could be making a difference to people.